Welcome to the Linux Lodge once again. I'm Kari. So in today's episode, I was thinking of sharing you something about window manager called Fluxbox. When you come to the Linux world, you start to hear these noises about window managers and desktop environments. So desktop environment is usually the thing that you will be using when you use your computer. Desktop environment in the simplest terms is kind of the start menu area, the taskbar, the uh, basic utilities for customizing and using your operating system, like uh, uh, setting the keyboard settings, uh, setting monitor, uh, locking the screen and uh, suspending hibernating your computer, even possibly restarting your computer, having a button for it. Like basic utilities like that exist in a desktop environment and desktop environment is essentially the thing that you have when you are running the Linux or Mac OS or Windows. But now what is a window manager? A window manager is basically just a program in the background that allows you to uh, use windows on your screen. So you can stretch them around and move them around and maximize and minimize them and do all kinds of funky things with the windows. But the plus side for using window manager is that it is usually uh, very flexible. You can modify a lot of things on how the windows are going to behave. Uh, you can easily modify a lot of things that start up when you start up your operating system by just modifying a text file that is used for configuration text file a configuration text file. So if you are running a potato for like a 20 year old computer, then you probably want to use a window manager. But when you install a window manager, it is basically unusable at first. You first need to start basically with the configuration file that I mentioned. You go to the configuration file and then you need to set up all the keyboard shortcuts and the programs that you want to launch on startup and etc. 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 And on top of that, you now need to be hunting for applications that provide kind of the, the the basic functionality of your computer. You need to find an application by yourself for uh, managing the, the monitor settings. You need to get some kind of a front end for, for managing your volume settings, you know, your keyboard layouts. So it's very much kind of like a do-it-yourself environment. And there will be a lot of trouble on the way, especially I would say with the, the suspend and lock screen stuff. And I would say that if you're not really not into editing a lot of configuration files and trying to find out why some things don't work like you expect them to work, then don't bother with the window manager. But anyway, <laughs> uh, talking of Fluxbox, it is an extremely, ex extremely lightweight. That is one of the greatest things about the window managers. They're extremely lightweight and extremely configurable. So anyway, when you want to use Fluxbox like any window manager, basically, you will have to go to the configuration files to set it up the way you want. In the case of Fluxbox, and in, in the case of many window managers, you go to your home folder. Now, then you probably need to see the hidden files and to see the hidden files in your file manager, you usually press Ctrl H. And then you will see the Fluxbox folder here, right there. Then you go there and you see different files that are kind of indicating what you're supposed to do with them. Here we have the keys file. Keys file is for keyboard shortcuts. So if I zoom in a bit, you will see that there is like some mouse uh, keyboard shortcuts or mouse shortcuts here for, for different kind of actions. If you go a little bit lower, you will see that there, there I have my settings for managing the volume in the volume keys. Indeed, if you're thinking of installing a window manager, these are the kind of things that you need to deal with. Chances are that the default settings that are here for managing your volume up and down are not going to work. So then you need to find out how they're going to be working. And here, basically what this says is that we're calling this key and when we're calling this key, then this button press will execute a command, which is executing the command of this application and then setting uh, the volume down by a notch. And then if you go down and you see there's a lot of, you know, keyboard shortcuts that I've made that are kind of uh, mimicking something that is on Microsoft Windows and Mac OS because 
old habits die hard and I think it's uh, if, if, if there's gonna be at least one constant in my use of, of Linux then I hope they're, they're gonna be the keyboard shortcuts so I can keep my sanity. Then we have the same keyboard shortcuts for moving in different workspaces like if I if I press the control and windows button and then I press uh, the left or right key then I will be moving around in the different workspaces as you see in the bottom of my screen. Here I have my keyboard layout hotkeys control shift does uh, toggle between uh, the keyboard layout in windows. I couldn't figure out yet quite how to make the control shift to be like like a toggling key so I added something to it so control shift Z changes the key mapping to US then I have here one for FI and here is Korean. You can also gonna do pseudo window tiling in the Fluxbox because there are basically two kinds of different window managers out there. Fluxbox is a, a floating window manager also known as stacking window manager. So it means that you can basically stack different windows on top of each other. If I go here and open a million windows, they're kind of stacking on top of each other. I kind of tiled my windows right now, but we are still in a floating window manager flux box. But if you set some kind of hotkeys here for kind of pseudo tiling of your windows, then you can do things like this. Now, even on windows, you can kind of pseudo um, tile your windows in this way, 50% of the screen is for one application, then the other side is gonna be for another application. Here are my shortcut keys for launching different applications really easily. So if I press Mod Alt A, then that will launch Audacity. If I want to launch Chromium, it will be launched with the C choice. But moving on from keyboard shortcuts, you can also, and you're gonna have to create your own menu for Fluxbox. Here you can see the menu settings. Basically, we begin making the Fluxbox menu here. So basically what we have here is all the items that I have in the menu that you see now here. It looks a little funky because it doesn't have any, you know, black borders or anything. But yeah, this is the Fluxbox menu. By default, it doesn't look ex exactly like that. You would have to make some modifications, like you have to get some kind of a theme for this. There's different system styles that you could use from here. For example, this, and uh, yeah, they are all of them are un basically unusable and ugly. So I have my own user styles here. Basically, this is WF Lux style, which I've modified for my own needs. So anyway, yeah, as you see, we have terminal here, you have terminal here, you have file manager here, you have file manager here. So this is how you create the menu in Fluxbox. Now, there are some tools which will allow you to automatically generate the Fluxbox menu so you don't have to bother doing this by yourself. But I like to do it by myself. And <laughs> secondly, I couldn't find any you know, easy way to, to automatically generate the menu on Debian. I know that there's some great menu generating applications available easily for you, for example, in the AUR for um, Arch Linux. So what you have here is the exec, which is what you put here when you want to launch an application. Then you have the name, which can be kind of anything if I do that, and then I restart my flux box and then I show you the menu you will see that the name of the terminal uh, will change there but let's put it back because this is not funny at all and terminator is the current terminal that I've been using file manager Thunar you could also use bzman fm hyphen qt which is uh, uh, also one of those really lightweight file managers Something that might be really useful for you if you want to start using any window manager. Here you can see some applications that you can use with your window manager. You could use for Bluetooth front end the Blue Man Manager. And if we go here to my settings and go to the Blue Man Manager, uh, this is the front end for connecting different Bluetooth devices on my system. And we have the keyboard settings via iBus. GDK in my case, if we go here to keyboard, uh, okay, 
I don't know what happened to that. But if we launch the display settings, it will launch the application Arender. Now Arender is really nice. You really, really, really don't want to make your uh, configurations for your monitors from the terminal. Uh, it, it, it's a complete pain. So you want something like this, a graphical user interface. Here you see the monitor that I have on my computer. If you press open, then I have made some configuration files here. So if I select this one and open it and then press here, then you can have uh, the screen uh, continued on a second screen. Or you can have it duplicated here, or you can return to using only your PC uh, uh, screen, or you can switch the picture entirely to your TV or whatever your needs might be. For monitoring your temperatures on your system, you can use P-Sensor. This is what P-Sensor looks like. Nothing fancy. But you can go here to settings and do all kinds of stuff. You can put, put it to startup. For Fluxbox, you also need some application to manage your wallpaper somewhat easily. So if we go to wallpaper, it will open this uh, nitro nitrogen application and you can choose the whatever background you want. And here you can see what will happen if I choose the lock screen option from my Fluxbox menu. It will start the i3 lock application and it will find this picture uh, to use with the lock screen. And if you want to have an easy access to your suspend command, you can create this in the menu exec and name it, for example, suspend logically, and then start the system CTL and give it a command suspend. If you want to change your startup settings, the applications that launch on startup, then you would go to the startup file here, which appears like as a script. You can right click it, for example, and then go to your favorite application for viewing text. And here we can see what is launching with Fluxbox session. Uh, here we can see that I've put the setting that will make the screen brightness kind of uh, tolerable when you start up the system. It also starts the X screen saver application for having the screen saver working. I also have the conman GTK here, which is great for managing your internet connections. I also have the P sensor here so you can monitor your system temperatures right here. If you want to change the appearance of Fluxbox, then you would go to the styles folder, which essentially means like appearance or themes. And here's my theme WF Lux. And if you go to the PixMaps folder, you will see these XPM files here. So what these are are essentially, for example, the minimize and maximize and close buttons etc so if we take the maximize button here we open it in krita you will see that this is the same as you see right here so if you want to do some silly things to it you can you can make it look like a red box if you prefer and then you go just to save as and you overwrite the maximize file. But I don't really want to do that because I have a nice theme right here in my opinion. So I'm gonna stick with this. And last but not least, as you can see, it's an extremely fast window manager. You know, moving around windows is extremely fast. You can open a lot of stuff here and of course, I use a lot of multimedia related applications and I don't really, I'm not conservative about the things that I'm installing on my system that much, but I like to have the base kind of working fast. And if we go to the H top, we can see that we're not using terribly RAM. <laughs> of course, there's no the simple screen recorder and a bunch of other stuff running there, but you know, it is quite lightweight. When you first start Fluxbox, it's probably using like not more than 300 megs of RAM. But something that I still need to clarify is the fact that I am using not only Fluxbox, I'm also using 
LXQT, and LXQT is a desktop environment. But in the beginning I told you that there are desktop environments and window managers, and desktop environments basically have all the necessary tools for you to run a complete and functioning operating system. Whereas a window manager is just a window manager, but every desktop environment includes some kind of a window manager to manage the windows. So what I did recently is I combined these two. I installed LXQT as a desktop environment and it's using Fluxbox for managing the windows. Now, why did I do that? I did it because I think it's easier to, you know, have your basic functionality of your desktop here just right out, right out of the box. I don't need to do weird configurations, try to spend hours and hours and hours how to get like a hibernate button here, or leave a logout, reboot, shutdown, shutdown, suspend, all these kind of basic things. And what, what I already told you about the kind of the appearance settings, brightness, date and time, uh, keyboard and mouse settings, monitor settings, and especially the power management. You really need to do some digging if you want to have your power management working correctly on your just window manager. I have the, you know, the ease of configuration of the LXQT desktop environment, and I can still have my Fluxbox uh, window manager, extremely lightweight window manager here in the background. And I can also use the existing shortcuts and configurations that I have for my Fluxbox window manager. Well, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Welcome to the Linux Lodge once again. I'm Garry. I lick my lips too much. <laughs>